Hurricane Barrel made landfall in Jamaica on Wednesday, bringing with it strong winds and torrential rainfall, Texas might be next. In the afternoon, the eyewall of the Category 4 storm passed close to the south coast of the island nation, putting more than 2.8 million people under hurricane watch. The storm, which was reduced from a Category 5 on Tuesday, had already made history as the strongest hurricane ever recorded in July. Though it has only marginally lessened in strength, the powerful storm, which can reach speeds of 140 miles per hour, is already responsible for seven fatalities in other nations. As a result, Jamaican officials begged locals to take the storm seriously and advised evacuations since storm surges could cause flooding. Although no deaths have been recorded there as of this writing, the storm's exact route is yet unknown. However, according to meteorological officials, the storm looks to be headed toward the Americas. An even stronger version of the hurricane, which has already claimed at least seven lives, is expected to impact either Texas or Mexico within the next 48 hours. Just after 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness posted on X, saying, Hurricane Barrel has so far brought a lot of water. Please try to stay as safe as you can, and in case you need them, don't forget to use the emergency contacts. Nine-foot waves were reported slamming into Jamaica's southern shoreline, prompting the National Hurricane Center to release its own update a few hours earlier. A hurricane warning remained in place for Jamaica, Grand Cayman, Little Cayman, and Cayman Brac, as well as the Yucatan Peninsula's coast from Porta Costa Maya to Cancun, according to the advertisement. While this was going on, a less severe hurricane watch was issued for the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico's coast north of Cancun to Cabo Catoche and south of Porta Costa Maya to Chetumal. A hurricane watch indicates that hurricane conditions are conceivable in a region, usually within 48 hours, but a hurricane warning indicates that hurricane conditions are anticipated somewhere within the alert area. Preparations to preserve life and property should be pushed to completion, the Storm Center stated, in reference to the former. Michael Brennan, the director of the National Hurricane Center, noted that as the storm moves counterclockwise and presses water onto Jamaica's shore on Wednesday night, storm surges of 6 to 9 feet over normal are anticipated. The storm is presently heading west, where it may hit the southern portion of Mexico before making landfall in the country's gulf named for itself and heading into more northern cities like Monterey, in what would be an unusual double impact. Nevertheless, Beryl's trajectory is still uncertain, and Texas state authorities are alerting citizens, especially those living near the coast, to the possibility of a hurricane or tropical storm on July 4. Texas Emergency Management Chief Nim Kidd said in a statement, while Texans take time to enjoy the holiday weekend with family and friends, it's important to stay weather aware and pay close attention to the rapidly changing forecasts. Don't get caught without a backup plan. This is a storm that I would be closely monitoring if I lived in Texas, and I have lived in Texas, said Britta Merwin, a meteorologist for Fox Weather. Sunday into Monday would be the possible impacts. As of this writing, Mexico appears to be the most likely contender to spare the southern state. Nonetheless, Texas Governor Greg Abbott directed the Division of Emergency Management in the state to notify the Texas Emergency Management Council of a hurricane on Wednesday. The Republican declared, Texas stands ready to deploy all available resources and support to our coastal communities, advising Texans to prepare for the possibility that tropical weather would eventually make its way to the U.S. Gulf Coast. However, significant damage already looks inevitable in Jamaica, where the storm is expected to strike the Yucatan Peninsula on Friday. Officials stated that by then, it will not intensify into a Category 5, as it had already attained that classification on Monday. According to meteorologists, it will then go into the Gulf of Mexico before making landfall in either southern Texas or Mexico. The Hurricane Center had already swept through Kingston, the nation's capital, as of 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Grand Cayman was still about 265 miles away. It is currently traveling at about 20 miles per hour in a west-northwest direction, while the winds whirling around it are about seven times quicker. Brennan said on Wednesday that the Cayman Islands are sort of next in line for seeing significant impacts, following a modest weakening that occurred earlier in the day as the storm reached Jamaica. At the time, 
Prime Minister Holness ordered people to evacuate from low-lying areas and locations that have historically seen flooding and landslides, making it apparent that the storm was a significant meteorological occurrence that should be treated seriously. Hours before the storm hit land, he also advised anyone residing along a river's edge to evacuate to a shelter or to safer ground. Individuals went on to board up their windows, and fishermen dragged their boats out of the nearby water. Before wind-whipped rains pounded into the island for several hours, workers worked to destroy roadside advertising boards to safeguard them from the lashing winds. Much of the capital lost power, but by the evening, the storm had passed off the island and was still moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Following this, Prime Minister Holness disclosed on social media that approximately 500 Jamaicans had been put in shelters. We are making every effort to make sure they are comfortable and well cared for, he stated. Earlier in the day, AccuWeather chief meteorologist John Porter released a statement highlighting the storm's deadly nature as churning whitecaps generated by barrels I raked the island's southern coast. He declared that Barrel posed the strongest and most dangerous hurricane threat that Jamaica has probably faced in decades, adding, we are very concerned about a wide variety of life-threatening impacts in Jamaica. Jamaica was consequently placed under a state of emergency and, hours before the impact, designated as a disaster area. Holness has declared an island-wide curfew and claims the restriction will stay in effect for the next seven days. The limitations were only in place on Wednesday and ran from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Since then, the curfew has ended, and officials are currently assessing the damage. Barrel first became a Category 5 hurricane on Monday, and by early Tuesday, it was generating maximum sustained winds of 165 miles per hour exceeding all previous records. At least one person has died and several are probably still missing as rescuers continue to search flooded regions and wreckage in the small island nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As Prime Minister Dickon Mitchell announced that an unknown number of homes had been demolished by the Armageddon-like storm, at least three persons have perished in Grenada. Heavy flooding also struck Venezuela, where at least four people have died and four more are still missing as a result of the storm, according to Nicolas Maduro, the president of the nation. The storm's route is known to have claimed the lives of at least seven individuals in total.